Today is World Press Freedom Day. Every year, May 3rd is usually dedicated to national and local celebrations of World Press Freedom Day around the world, some in the form of online debates and workshops. This year, UNESCO is launching a global campaign on media and social media channels with a focus on journalism without fear or favor as a theme. Joining us live via Skype is journalist Agba Jalingo. Good afternoon, Mr. Agba. How are you doing this afternoon? I'm doing very fine. It's good to be here. And happy World Press Freedom Day to you. Yeah, amazing. I'm uh, very, very happy today. Now, this year's theme is journalism without fear or favor. Is this the situation for journalists at, at the moment? It has never been, and um, we haven't gotten there yet. Because um, every journalist that wants to do his work now without fear or fear, we will definitely be prepared to face some uh, backlash. As we have seen, I have been a victim of that. I was in jail for six months for deciding to do my work without fear of fear. But it shouldn't make us be afraid. It should rather strengthen us to do our work because there is no way in the world where leaders will be happy to be exposed. Once you dog after their heels, they will definitely come after you. And that's the challenge that we have to face. But it is part of the ingredients that make the work sweeter. Now, talking about your experience as one who has been, you've been locked for actually, I mean, putting out information out there by the government. You want to share a bit of that experience for us. Doesn't this in a way make you want to, want to go back to your shell? And given the fact that it's journalism without fear or favor, doesn't this somehow make you afraid for your life? Well, the option of being afraid, uh, it's not um, one of these things. But no doubt, it can be very, very excruciating when you are in the doldrum alone without anybody with you sometimes not even with your pen you are just there alone but, uh, like i said it is part of the ingredients that make this work actually sweeter when you know that what you are doing is actually rattling somebody out there anytime they refuse to be accountable it makes me feel really good and i think that should be the attitude of every journalist out there who wants to do society any good we mustn't be afraid the people in power want to make us afraid that is their intention but we must uh, take a, a determined position to make sure that we are never afraid we do our work. They are intense. They come and go. But we are career journalists and we will be here forever. Even when they leave, we will be here to tell their story. So we cannot afford to be afraid for the sake of the society. It's under the uh, democracy that we saw uh, DSS officials go into a court to rearrest somebody that was granted bail by a court, a competent court of jurisdiction. We never saw that even over 30 years of democracy. But that happened now for a military government. But that happened in a democracy. It shows you how how much of backwardness we are making even under this um, democracy. And uh, it should be a reason for our determination as journalists to, to continue to do our work without fear of favor. So I think that that um, particular team is very, very apt for what is happening in our country. Can you recall your last experience of incarceration to us and how, the, how those moments were for you, Agba Jalingo? <laughs> it was a mixed feeling. Uh, one way, I felt really bad that uh, I had to be taken into custody for uh, what I, I consider, well, the matters are before the court to determine whether I am guilty or not. So I wouldn't want to say, but deep inside my mind, I know I was uh, only being uh, persecuted for doing my work. I stayed in the police station for 34 days where I was chained uh, for over two weeks to a deep freezer, put hands on my, my legs were manacled to a deep freezer for two weeks. After 34 days, I was taken before he, before he judged. Uh, who sent me for temporary remand in Africa prison in Calabar. When I got to prison, I was treated like every other prisoner, and uh, I ended up spending 179 days in there. Initially, it was, it were anxious moments, no doubt, but after some time, I had to just settle in. And uh, take off my feet, I knew that I was going to be there for as long as the governor wanted, because um, it was clear that uh, it was a political matter, and... Um, I wasn't going to get out of it um, early. But thank God for people like Pro Plus TV and uh, the very bold Nigerian media who stood up to request for my release. And after six months, I think I was released. And not because anybody wanted to, but there was a lot of pressure on the governor and uh, he had to pull the strings. Even though he was trying to say he did not arrest me, he had to pull the strings. The strings. However, he did it to take me there to make sure that I, I got out of jail. I'm, I'm out on, on bail and uh, the matter is still, uh, the trial is still going on. I was supposed to be in court on the 6th, 7th, and 8th of, uh, of April. But because of the COVID uh, first holiday, I was unable to go to court. So immediately after this holiday, I'm sure that uh, the, the court will give us a new date and I will be back in the dock.
for to continue my trial. I, I am not afraid of being tried for the work that I do. I know I didn't do anything wrong, and uh, I'm prepared for the trial. But for the uh, the imprisonment, I have written a book, The Pen in Jail. I am writing, rather, The Pen in Jail, and uh, I think that that book will soon be out. And it will be a full chronicle of all that I will that I went through that period. And uh, I think the public should look forward to that book. But it was a mixed feeling. I was happy one way and the other way I wasn't happy. Investigative journalism is becoming more challenging now. What would you say are the factors responsible yeah. for this development? Investigation costs a lot of money anywhere in the world. As a matter of fact, once you want to do investigation, it costs money. Even if you ask the police money, even FBI, they have to pay their agents. They, they, you need money to, to open some doors. You need money to get some information. You need contacts. You need um, a lot of profiling as well. And um, I, I don't see how many Nigerian media organizations have the capacity to be able to do in-depth investigation presently. The ones that have that capacity are very few, not to talk about uh, freelance journalists in this country. Um, but I, I will also say that technology is making these things easier for us because of the type of gadgets that are coming out for us. And um, the fact that every citizen today who has a gadget in his or her hand has become a journalist. So it is easier for this information to flow around. But I think the major impediment to investigative journalism in Nigeria today is the fact that investigation is costing a lot of money. And media houses that can barely pay salaries are finding it difficult to fund investigation. Um, the, the investigation is investigative stories that uh, BBC, CNN, and Co. Before they finish doing them, they spend up to a million, two million dollars to be able to, to dig out facts about one story. And uh, I, I, I don't see how many of um, our media houses in this country have that kind of uh, capacity. But nevertheless, there are individuals, individual journalists in this country who go out of their way painstakingly to make sure that they expose some of the things that men of power, men and women of power, are doing in this country, and they are doing it very efficiently. We have seen what Fisayo did from Mikoyi prison. We see what Premium Times and Sahara reporters are doing independently. And uh, I, I do hope that uh, even those of us that are coming from behind will build on this, um, this work that these other people are doing and improve on it. In the future, there are so many young people that are coming. They have an eye, very sh sharp eyes for investigation. And I'm very confident that they will take what we are doing to the next level. Let's consider the provisions of the Freedom of Information Act, the FOI. How far do you think journalists mm -hmm. can go in accessing information, especially from government quarters? Well, I should rather say that journalists have underutilized that law because with the fervency that, um, that we pushed to pass that law, I would have thought that by now documents will be flying everywhere. But uh, journalists have also not been able to, to maximize the use of that law. Uh, so it is difficult to measure the response from... Uh, government quarters when they are, there's not enough push to see how we get information. So on a day like this, I think I would rather call on my colleagues to say that um, in the course of our work, we must try as much as we can to use that tool. It's a very effective tool that we have used in Crossover State where I, I do my journalism and the rest of the country. And uh, I, I also know that somewhere in Delta State, that law was also used uh, to send some people to, to jail for refusing to, uh, for, uh, to avail journalists of uh, information. So it is not a lame law. People have used it one way or the other to achieve some results. And I think that more and more of our colleagues should be encouraged to, to use the FOI law to see how we can extract information. I, I, I know that there are agencies of government that are reluctant to give us information, even when you apply under that law. But uh, I will still hold that we have not done uh, the much that was expected of us in pushing uh, through that law to get uh, more and more information from government. So you know, until we do that, it will be difficult to assess how that law has fared uh, since it was passed. Finally, Mr. Agbajan, before I let you go, by way of admonition and recommendation, what would you say? Well, I, I would only say to people who hold uh, power in this country that, um, see, if you don't want scrutiny, don't look for public um, office. Uh, nobody will come to your house to ask you questions or to dog after your heels if you do not ask us to give you power. As, one, as, as long as you are ready to offer yourself to the public and ask them for their votes to give you power, or you want to go and serve by way of appointment in government, even if you're a traditional ruler, even if you're a religious leader, you must be ready to be scrutinized. And the earlier our leaders come to that reality, the better for them. Our constitution empowers us as journalists to dog after their heels 
to report whatever they are doing to the people, and we will do that. There is no leader that is going to stop us from doing that, and they must accept that fact. If you don't want to be scrutinized, stay in your, in your house. Don't look for power. Live your private life, and we will leave you alone. But if you come into a public life and you are holding public money, you are holding holding public responsibility must be ready to be scrutinized to be whether you like it or not it is a given we will dog after your heels we will follow you and the earlier they accept it the better for democracy the better for nigeria mr agba jalingo thank you for joining us on news on the hour and once more happy world press freedom day to you god bless you and god bless plus tv